Brilliant. Well, thank you everyone for joining me. My name is Adam Grocott. I'm a maths teacher from Jersey in the Channel Islands. And today I'm going to be sharing with you some hints and tips as to how I teach mathematics and how I get my students to learn mathematics through Microsoft OneNote. Microsoft OneNote is an application that was introduced to me a few years ago. And it's been it's been something that I will probably never stop using. OK, it's it's a tool that I have with the use of Class Notebook being able to constantly communicate, share knowledge, and, and share understanding of some brilliant ideas and mathematical concepts, all through the ability of OneNote and what that can do for you. So Alfonso, I'll just ask you one last time, can you confirm that you can see my screen? Yes, I can see it. Brilliant, and from now on then, if we keep, mute, if we keep microphones muted whilst I go through this presentation, then that would be great, apart from obviously when I ask you to join in. So this is me. Maths and OneNote, how do I get those two things to combine? I have read Joe Bowler's subject book about mathematical mindsets. That was very prevalent to me when I started reading it because it started to make me question how I break down the barriers for my students as learners. I'm very fortunate that I get to work with a lot of students that are perceived as weaker students. And what I mean by that is they're probably just lacking a little bit of self-esteem. They're probably the students that you know yourself that say, I don't get maths. I'm not a maths person. I don't get on with maths. And it's all fictitious and it's all a mindset that they've got that un unfortunately, they believe that they're unable to see patterns, they're unable to see trends, they're unable to appreciate mathematical concepts. And perhaps they don't have the confidence to build on that knowledge. I love working with those students and I love bringing mathematics to life through the tools that I've got in Microsoft OneNote. I think about when we're working on mathematics and I think back to Wolfram's model and his four stages of working on mathematics. And that's how I like to shape my lessons for my students. I like to pose them a question and more often than not when I can, when I can, I like to make it about my favorite football team, Wolverhampton Wanderers. I like to then transfer from that question to a mathematical model. And it may be that that's the level of learning that unfortunately I think that maybe too many of our students or certainly my experiences as a learner was just focused around it was here's a mathematical model this is going to be something that you're going to learn you're going to remember this mathematical model and then you're going to practice it. you're going to practice it and practice and practice it and it it sort of it stuck with me a little bit because it was a case of when I was a learner as math going okay well what if I've got this I do see the value in practice but I do want to be challenged further perhaps after 10 I'm okay with that I want to be challenged and I want to be stretched further and and only one part of this mathematical model is actually about performing those calculations. I still speak to too many teachers who unfortunately will obsess over how good their student books look because of how many written calculations there are in it. When actually there's so many more other facets to learning mathematics other than just having the ability to perform a calculation. And then it's about taking that calculation though, and once you've got that, and once you've got that embedded, and once you have actually discovered how to do, it, it's about taking that back to the real world and seeing if your original question was answered, or if then you've got an original question from that, where you can then go from there. I also think about what expert teaching requires, and this is from McRae's 2019 book about ex um, what every good lesson should have, and it's based on the theory by Alison and Farby in 2015. But it's, it's those five points there that say that all mathematics lessons and all lessons should, should be challenging, should have that element of explanation and modeling, but should then have just some scaffolded practice before we start then thinking about the questioning, and before we think about the feedback that we give to our students. It's a very important process to be able to do all of that and to get that into every single lesson. But it's something that I like to shape my lessons around, and I like to do that using Microsoft OneNote. So this, for me, is a very, very typical uh, one note page. It's one that I've recently used and it's where I start looking at a Pythagoras problem. I mentioned earlier that I'm from a wonderful part of the UK called Wolverhampton and my favourite soccer team there is Wolverhampton Wanderers, in which we have some very very outstanding players. So what I'll do is I'll start to pose my students these kind of questions and I'll say look Ruben never scored a wonderful goal. As he struck the ball how far was it directly from where the ball was to the crossbar? And this is that real world problem that I'm trying to pose to my students. I'm trying to give them that real world problem so as then they can start to engage, start to be hooked straight away into thinking mathematically. Now, with the power of OneNote, I'm, I'm able to just be so much more creative with my pages. This isn't just a white slide, it's 
I've, I've been able to manipulate the colour. I've been able to embed a video for my students of that actual goal. I've been able to look at an image and post an image so as my students can get onto that and they can start to see and they can start to think about how they how they start to think mathematically. But this is very much how I then start to create my pages and this is what I then do on OneNote. Now with OneNote, for my students, if I go back to the slide, we're gonna, we're gonna look at this image that's right here and we're gonna say, well look, how far out from the goal is Ruben Neves there? Are we able to estimate? Have we got any markings on the pitch that we'll be able to think about that? And all of this is just from an image that I've been able to put into OneNote. So then my students will be able to use the researcher tool. It's inbuilt into OneNote and it's a great little tool for helping you bring your learning to life and allow students to access more information. So they've typed in football pitch dimensions and we've taken the top result there because that is about a, a full on UK association football pitch. And they'll embed that then straight into their OneNote page they'll start to have a look at this penalty box and they'll start to zoom right in and see, well, that says 18 yards. Okay, but down at the other end, it's actually got a conversion that says that roughly 18 yards is 16.5 meters. So we're starting to now think about dimensions. Maybe we're starting to think about conversions. Maybe we're then able to start to estimate an area as to how far Ruben Nevis is away from the pitch. And then we'll start thinking about football goal heights. Now, Research tool on this occasion actually brought up two other versions. So I still assist my students with this. And I say, well, look, here's a full size soccer goal. And that's now in eight foot. OK, so let's just go back a minute. Are we able to estimate this distance here? How many units of measure have we got going on here? And now how many other units of measurement have we got to the top of the crossbar? And I'm posing all of my students these questions on a OneNote page that brings it to life. I'm able to input images. I'm able to allow my students to navigate around the infinity canvas that you've got within OneNote. And they're able to now start to think mathematically about how we go about answering that problem. Now with this, obviously I'm gonna be using Pythagoras' theorem. And the best thing for me that I can do in OneNote, I'm very, very fortunate, I've got a Surface Pro and I'm able to therefore then do some digital linking on my page that then talks about right angle triangles. And all I'm doing there is I'm just selecting the ink to shape feature. Ink to shape feature is something that's built into OneNote and it's able to allow me, I'll just go back and play it again, to draw a rough triangle there and then snap it straight to a right angle triangle. And maybe I've been a bit guilty there because I've drawn what is a typical right angle triangle. It's it's from, a, it's from a rectangle and the, the right angle's in the bottom left-hand corner. But I do have to say to my students, well, look, actually, maybe just because that is a right angle triangle, maybe right angle triangles look a little bit differently. And I'll start using the rotate features from my image features within OneNote to say to my students, well, look, is this still a right angle triangle? Is this still a right angle triangle? I'm now getting them to look at how I can reflect, how I can rotate shapes. We're thinking again about some a different concept within mathematics, but that's just about me describing a right angle triangle. And I'll play that again once more. Once I've selected the image, I'll just simply right click on it, and that will then bring up all of the other formatting tools that I've got within OneNote about this shape. Okay, right clicking on it, I can rotate much in the same way that you can use your editing tools within OneNote. Uh, you can use them in other Word applications, etc. I've got all of that input into my OneNote tools, into my arsenal, so as I can start talking about other mathematical concepts for my students. And this is just as I'm starting to introduce Pythagoras theorem. So then, now that I've got my right angle triangle and I'm confident that my students have understood that, maybe then now I'll start to perform a calculation. So I'll give them some values. And I'll say to them, right, okay, we're going to use the A is four and B is six. And this is just as an example. This doesn't necessarily bear any resemblance to our triangle and our problem today. But look, this is a mathematical model as to now I can how I can use Pythagoras theorem. And because I've got the digital linking on my OneNote page, I can do all of this for my students. Okay. I'm able to write it all out, show them exactly how I'm doing it. And some of the best features about this will actually come later on. I off the top of my head, don't know the square root of 52, but I know that if I lasso select it and select the maths tools that I've got built into OneNote, that will evaluate it for me. I'm gonna to say to my students, look, you've got a calculator. Most students that I work with now do have mobile phones. They have calculators in their pockets. It's absolutely brilliant. And I can say to them, well, look, use that because you've got that at your disposal. It's our students are very fortunate. The two mathematics papers that they'll take upon leaving secondary school they will be allowed to use a calculator in both of them. And I think that's a reflection of, of life and society. But I've got one there already built into OneNote. 
as I said earlier, off the top of my head, I must apologise. I'm not, I'm not Superman. I don't know what 52 is. Sorry, what the square root of 52 is. But I will be able to say to my students, well, look again, and I'll play this again for you. Once I've got to that stage, I can then use the math tools that are already built on OneNote. And I will just stress again that I don't want to take for granted the digital linking tools in OneNote are absolutely superb. I've got a whole choice of pens and stationery at the top of my screen that I can manipulate, that I can pick which colours are suitable for which students based on which backgrounds. And I can say to them, look, this is how I'm going to use the digital linking to demonstrate this. And more will be revealed on that one. But I just want to go back to that square root of 52. Using my service pen, I'll lasso select it. I'm going to click on the math tools. I then just want to select my action is to evaluate it. OK, I can show the steps if I want to. And I can ask it to uh, to expand more on me. And what you might be able to see there is that little immersive reader icon. That's superbly powerful for bringing out the, the description to my students to say to them that that's exactly how they go about it. But that was just another something that, as I say, I wanted to share with you because those are the tools within OneNote that are therefore then going to help my students learn mathematics. OK. So we'll move on. I've put in that the square root of uh, 52 is 7.211. All right. And now I want to share with you this. When I go to view, the reason that I love the digital linking is that I've got a replay tool. And what I want to say to my students is, look, I know I've replayed this video for you. But actually, in built into OneNote, you have a replay tool that will play all that digital linking for them. And you can see the slider moving across at the bottom of the screen here. What I can do for my students is I can say to them, look, well, let's just pause a moment. All right. Let's grab that slider. Let's drag it back, because what I want to do is I want to control or I want you to control rather the pace at which you learn this mathematical model that my students might look at the end product and be like, I mean, what, what on earth is he on about here? All right. or, or worse, if I say to my students, right, now you've seen that, get it all copied into your book. It's not about that. That learning is not engaging for my students. I want them to really understand this mathematical model. So I'm not going to get them to rush through it. I'll use the replay to, for uh, the replay feature that's built into OneNote to get my students to go back and play the whole thing again. And I'm not afraid to do that. And I'll give them that control when we're in ICT suites and they've got devices to say to them, look, guys, I've put a written calculation for you there. Use the replay tool, go over my digital linking and have a look for it again yourself. So this is where I'm then thinking back to my model now and back to my theory. And I'm asking myself, am I creating engaging mathematics? Am I posing them a question? Have I gone from the real world to a model? Am I performing calculations? Am I going to go back to it? Is the challenge right? Am I, are my explanations and my modeling accurate? Do I need at this stage to give them some scaffolding practice? And I'll use all of that with my questioning tools and asking for the student feedback just to try and ascertain their knowledge and understanding. But all of this has started just from one question about a soccer goal. OK, when I say when I talk about trying to make it engaging and how I can bring it to life on one note, I'm thinking already about the tools that I can use to help my students learn and get engaged with mathematics. So as they, then they're starting to get hooked into it and to hopefully start to break down those barriers. Now, one other thing that I love about OneNote is how you can integrate then other applications from it. I will often say to my students, look, it's, it's very important that you can use Excel. It's, um, I go on LinkedIn all the time and I'm saying to my students, look, look at how many employers are out there and they're looking for Excel skills. That doesn't mean to say that just because you're doing practice for mathematics, you, you're doing it in a different way or you're doing it in a way that's a, a disservice to the student's ability. I will then give my students an opportunity to go away and learn about square roots and square numbers, because that's the guided practice that we're going to be doing for, for this Pythagoras theorem project. But what I'll do to them is I'll give them a Microsoft Stream video. Now, this is that Microsoft Stream video that I can then embed straight into a OneNote page. And I absolutely love that I've got that ability to put that into a OneNote page. So as my students can then pick up this, this video here, which I'll play. It's explaining exactly what I want them to do. It's giving them the formulas as to how we're going to put it in. And that's not to say that that's to say that's taken away from their practice. It's just giving them a different way to think about it. I'm stressing here that square numbers and numbers that are multiplied by themselves. And if they're going to produce a spreadsheet on it, they've got to then start to use these formulas. And I just start thinking differently about my practice, as I say, for that. But what I'll do is I'll give my students this instruction. As you can see from this example, I've only gone as far as eight. And that was a 27 second video clip that I recorded using the screen recorder in stream that I can embed 
straight into a one note page. And I think that's important for my students as well because of how they're then gonna engage with the learning. I don't want them to be navigating away from OneNote as an application. I don't want them to be like, right, okay, I'm in this and now I'm in this and now I'm over here. Everything that I want to embed within a OneNote page, I can put within a OneNote page just by simply pasting the link. I took the link there from stream, pasted it into a OneNote page and that's how they're then able to access this video. All right, superbly powerful tools all at your disposal. And as I say, the important bit is therefore then that my students aren't having to navigate away from other applications. So let's go back to the real world model. I'll get my students to, uh, again, perhaps do a link over the image and think about their dimensions on the pitch. We've started to look at um, what this distance is in meters. That's our chosen given unit of measurements. We've got that, that distance there we've estimated to be 20.15 meters. And now we're going to think about the height of the goal. We were asked at the start what the, to estimate the distance from where we struck the ball to the uh, to the top of the crossbar. Now, one of the features that you can do in Calculator, as I say, I don't necessarily like navigating away from other applications, but I did just want to point out this: that in Calculator tools on Microsoft, you've got lots of different currency um lots of different conversions sorry you can do currency or anything else like that but for the purpose of this one i was showing my students look we want the height of the goal that's eight feet let's estimate that in meters and all of that is then integrated in the calculator app so that might be a, something that i just model to them and again it's just a real world model i'm saying to them look we're going to have a look at conversion of length here you've got this tool at your disposal i might then pause on that for maybe half a lesson and say well look let's estimate how this is actually converted but i just wanted to stress that to them there so as then we can then go back to our problem and we're going to look then at using our meters as our units of measurement for 20.15 we've got the height of the goal now is 2.4 and when i then start to perform this as a written calculation again for my students this is exactly what they're doing because of as i say i don't want to navigate too far out of the apps i'll just remind them that actually well guys let's use the math tools that we've got already built into OneNote. We've got 20.15 squared there, and I'll put that then in, into my OneNote page using my digital linking again, but I've got that math tools option inbuilt into OneNote. So it may well be that actually I wanted to do a conversion, and I might just then give them a, another mathematical model as to how they can look at conversions. But what this therefore then means for my students is that they're then able to then start thinking about the problem here and have they come to a solution. There's my mathematical model that I showed them right at the start, there's the calculation that they've performed. Has that gone back into our real world model? Yes, it has. And that's how I can then start to use the tools in OneNote just to make my students think about that one problem. And, and in all of that, as I say, I'm thinking differently about my practice. I know that it was some of the comments that came up at the start as to how we use practice and how I learned mathematics and did it involve a lot of, a lot of practice and, and was there just one model shown? I'm trying to show you here how you can use OneNote, but also how you can relate it to the theory that's relevant today to how our students learn mathematics. Now, I've got some other examples here as we reach the halfway stage of the presentation. Again, I'm, I'm thinking about how I use OneNote. I'm thinking about other examples. I'll go back to that point that I made at the start when I was talking about a, a right angle triangle. And, and I do do that all the time. I'm very guilty of going, look, this is a right angle triangle, and I draw it. And I have to say to my students, look, right angle triangles can come and look in many different ways. So when I then start to think about how I teach transformations, what I might say to my students is, look, we're going to plot a set of axes. So I'll go to the rule lines on my OneNote notebook page, and I'll go to my shapes, and I'll draw my set of axes. And this is really important for some of my students for whom, if they can do this on a computer, it may take away their sort of anxieties. I've got some students that have got some fine motor skill issues. So therefore, then, the last thing that they want to hear about is, is well, Mr. Grocott's going to ask me to draw these shapes. So that's why I've paused the video at this stage, because just in all of that, that probably took about 15 seconds, 15 seconds to get yourself a set of axes drawn and the right angle triangle. OK, and for my students with fine motor skills, that's then an important issue. I'm, make, I'm making my learning more accessible for them by using the tools that are already built into OneNote. OK, what does this then look like when we start thinking about transformations? Well, like what I demonstrated earlier, I'll use my lasso select. I'll resize my image because I wasn't happy as to how that fitted on my uh, on my square paper. I'll just simply copy and paste another one and I'll start then talking to him about translations as to how I'm moving this shape around the axis. Obviously the bugger question that goes with this for my students, but I'll then start saying to them, well, as well as translations, what about reflections? 
is that a reflection there just because I've moved it to the other side of the axis? Well, no. Well, then we'll go back to them tools that I was on about earlier. When you right click on a shape, you've got your rotation, reflection tools built into OneNote that will help your students. I, I know for myself, when, when I'm actually teaching this and I'm using paper, a lot of it means going and getting the um, going and getting the square paper out, going and getting the um, going and getting the tracing paper, and you go down to the maths office and you're like, right, I'm doing trans I'm doing transformations. Where's where's all the stationery? Are other students going to have the pencils? Are they going to have their rulers? Are, are we going to be able to even? Where's the square paper? Where's the tracing paper? Because I'm doing it on OneNote, I'm doing it in a very very different way, and I've got the digital tools there because they're already built into OneNote to make that that learning just that bit quicker and that bit more accessible for my students. And it's also because it's on then a digital notebook. They've then got access to that because it's on OneNote. They can access that anywhere from their Office 365 accounts. It doesn't necessarily have to just be on a piece of paper that then gets stuck into their exercise book that gets left in the classroom. Now, when I was talking earlier about the math tools that are already built into OneNote, I do want to share with you this, and this is how you can generate practice quizzes. So if we go back to that concept of practice, that's great. But isn't it brilliant if we give our students the tools to generate and direct their own practice? So let me share with you this example of how you can use it. I was looking at um, 3x plus 5 equals 17. OK, we're doing linear equations. And I say to my students, right, this is the um, this is the maths problem that I want you to solve. And with the math tools built into OneNote, that will then do that for you. OK, I've lasso selected it again. I've tapped on math tools. So therefore, then over here, it's going to solve it for me for X. And it's telling me that X is four. That's brilliant. And when I show the steps, therefore, then as well, I've got my steps there. I'll pause on this as well. Um, oh, I just want to just go back just a little bit because I've just missed something there. So I'll just replay that. So I'll just pause it at the right time. Because, again, I just want to stress to you about making your learning accessible. When you've got the math tools here built into OneNote, you have then got that immersive reader. I've clicked on show steps there, so I'll just pause my video. Over here, immersive reader will launch the immersive reader to explain all of that to your students. It gives them just that other opportunity, that other medium to learn about what's happening here. But the important bit now is I want to show you this. I want to show you how they can generate a practice quiz right away from using the using the technology that's built into Microsoft Forms that will put that into a OneNote page for them. OK, scroll down to the bottom there. Click generate practice quiz. You can select how many questions you want it for, but the artificial intelligence within Microsoft OneNote will then take what you've done on the page. It'll take the digital link in and it will generate you a maths quiz. So that's then a different level of practice for my students. And I tell you what is interesting when you do this with your students, if you give it a go, is say to your students, right, whose who's quiz is easiest? And you then say, you're having your students, oh, is his easiest? So that's not fair. He's got he's got bigger numbers. And you then start having a conversation with them going, well, actually, is it about the, the quantity of the number? Is it actually about the size of the number? Is your quiz any more difficult or challenging? Why? How are the steps? Let's go back to our model as to how we solve this. Let's go back to thinking about our calculation and say to your students that and put, put them on the spot to say, well, look, is yours any easier or any more difficult based on what the, gen what the practice quiz has come up for? So that's even before they've then had to do the quiz themselves. It's about just saying to them, well, look, have a think about the, the, the practice quiz and really dissect the solution steps based on what your quiz is asking you to do. Another one that I like doing is the graphical software that's within to math tools. Again, talking about my students earlier, if we were to say, right, we're going to plot some linear equations, I know that that means popping down to the maths office, going and getting some graph paper, have my students got um, their pencils? Have they got their rulers? And I know that all of this is going to be possibly something that comes up in the maths exam, but I don't just want to groom my students just to how to behave in the exam. I want to make sure that my students are, are actually understanding the concepts that are happening within the learning here about the linear equations. So again, if I go to the math tools that are already built into OneNote, I know that I love that it will, it will plot this for me in 2D. I've lasso selected it. There's my linear equations. If I go to graph in 2D, the, it's taken the software there. There's other software that we've used, but this is already built into OneNote. So that's how quick I can then generate these graphs for my students before I then start talking about why all of these lines have got a different gradient. I can start saying to my students, well, what does gradient mean? And I've got all of this before I've said to them, right, here's a table of coordinates. You make sure you plot that. I want my students to understand why the gradient of the slope is different. I want to talk to them about the formula Y equals MX plus C. And what I want to talk to them about is then saying, look, all of these have got the same Y intercept. 
And that's before they spent 30 minutes plotting it out because I've got graph paper and I've got rulers and I've got pencil sharpeners coming out of my ears just because my students have got to have that visual model. I can do that for them. I can generate that for them. I can say to my students, right, you go away and you type in your own and see if you can plot that in. You know, explore the graphing software to be able to complement your learning and your understanding of this concept because I want you to understand why the gradient of a slope is different. Even if the y-intercept is the same, why is the gradient of slope different? And as I say, I'm able, using the tools in OneNote, to give them that visual um, that visual model so as they can look at that for themselves without having to spend necessarily 20, 30 minutes on something that they do uh, just to generate that uh, that graph there. Oh, that's the end of my slide. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pause all my slides and everything. I have then got some further examples in OneNote, but I would now like to to take this opportunity to ask if anyone's got any questions, please feel free to throw them into the chat. If anyone's got anything that they want me to re-go over, I'll start stop sharing my screen. I'll leave the recording going. And please bear in mind that obviously this is therefore then going to be broadcast on the, on YouTube. But, uh, but if anyone's got any questions, please make sure that you throw them into the chat right now because I would love to, to see and respond to any of the questions that you may have based on what I've just showed you there in my presentation. As I said, I do have a OneNote notebook that I've got some examples of, and I'll show you and share with you those in a moment. But I just wanted to give the opportunity. I'll ask um, I'll ask Afonso if uh, if you're still there. Uh, Afonso, you introduced yourself yes. earlier and said you were a teacher yes. of Portuguese. Brilliant. What I'm going to do then is um, is I'm going to go now into my OneNote notebook, and I'll share with you my screen again. These again are real examples of what I've done teaching with Microsoft OneNote. And this is how I then try to think about my pages and how I create uh, engaging content for my students. I'll go back to sharing my screen now. And some of the other tools that I'm, uh, that I'm gonna create and, uh, and demonstrate for you here now are hopefully gonna put uh, Afonso to the test as well, right? Let's think about area of a circle. I love pizza and I'm having a party. This is a real life example. How many of us have done this and how many of us have um, have have used this example for students when we're thinking about pizza? I've got two pizzas that are each 25 centimeters in diameter or three that are 20. Which one should I get? I know that there's been countless disputes in the Grocott household at parties as to how much pizza we should order. Never mind what flavor, how much pizza should we order, okay? So this is a real world problem, and it's how many mediums, how many large are we gonna get, how many people have we got, blah, blah, blah. That's a, that's a real life problem there, and that's what I'm gonna pose to my students. Now, I teach on an island that has a lot of students that have English as an additional language, and we have a lot of students that come from Madeira. What I can do, right here in OneNote, Afonso, this is your opportunity, this is your time to shine. Have you got your microphone turned on? Are you ready for this? Okay. Brilliant. Afonso, what I've got in the view application part of OneNote for Windows 10 is a translate feature. And I know that this might sound like a simple concept, but as I say, for a lot of my students where English is an additional language, I might therefore then make this just that bit more accessible to them by putting this into Portuguese. I'll insert that straight away onto the page. It's changed its formatting, so I'll just change that back. But I want to ask you, Afonso, how accurate do you find this translation that we've done right here within OneNote? Without me having to have to leave an application, there you go. I've put that into OneNote. Does that make it more accessible for my students where English is an additional language? And how accurate is it? Um, it's quite good. Uh, little, little things that could be better, but it's, it's understandable. I think it's an interesting conversation because we say it to our students so much, so much of the time. And I'll apologize now, and this is my ignorance. I will have to translate that back to English to be able to share with you my thoughts on it. But I'm saying to my students a lot of the time, look, I, um, I need you to be able to identify what the keywords are in a question. And I say to my students that, particularly when I'm thinking about how I can assess them all right, or what assessments they've got coming up. And I do create some assessments in one note, which I just want to let... Um, I want to let Christina know about. Yes, I do create some assignments 
within OneNote and I share them out through Microsoft Teams. I think that in itself is a presentation, but I do just wanted to let you know because I saw that come up in the chat to say that, yes, I do use OneNote for assessing students' ability. Sometimes I'll do that just simply by embedding uh, a form within a page and I'll think about how I can utilise multiple choice questions or anything else like that for my students. But there you go. I've, I've said to my students, look, ha let's identify the key concepts within this. So that's then where I'll use my highlighter. That's not my highlighter. There's my highlighter again. Let's go back to that. There you go. Let's highlight these. These are my keywords. These are my key terms All right, within my question. I'll highlight. I'll go over them just to bring that about. Now, when I taught this lesson for my students, they had to understand what pi was. And I had to say to them that this is what pi was. I'm rubbish at drawing circles. Do you remember earlier when I showed you that ink to shape tool? If I go back to that now and draw a circle, that uh, won't work in highlighter, but it will work in pen. If I use the ink to shape tool there, there you go, snapped it straight to a circle for me. Not worrying about a compass, not worrying about anything else. It will do most shapes. I'll tell you one that it won't do. It'll never do a rhombus. No, it is a rhombus, it's a kite. It won't do a kite. If I wanted it to do a kite, it always snaps it to a rhombus, that was it. I knew there was the thinking around it. It'll do a parallelogram, happy days, not a problem. But for some reason, and, and I've brought this up with Mike Tholson, it, it won't do a kite, it'll always snap it to a rhombus. But your ink to shape tool there is brilliant. So for my students, when we're talking about circles now, there you go, I've got the ink to shape tool, and that will snap that to a circle straight away for me. So we were looking at pi and looking at the relationship between the circumference and the diameter. I did again hop into my researcher tool, and I got that uh, it was about Archimedes and William Jones as to as to who who discovered this and how they went about exploring that relationship with circle. So I did use that from research tool again. And I did find this brilliant video here in YouTube, which again, because I've got one note and I've got this sort of infinity space that can build anything into. I'm not going to play all of that, sorry. But I just wanted to show you that just by simply pasting the YouTube link, that will put that video there in the OneNote page for me. And this is all then about that engaging real world problem. I'm going to go back to the theory earlier about learning mathematics before I've then even then started to demonstrate any form of calculations. Now, this is a calculation that I had for my student that I did for my students. I then give them the opportunity to replay this. That's their turn there, and that was a student's best example. And I'll just go back over some of the features that I spoke about earlier. I'm going to lasso select all of that. All right, that'll snap that for me. So I'm just going to move it just over here for a moment, just so as I can pinch zoom in a bit because it's actually under the viewpoint again, and I want to stress this as an absolutely amazing feature for my students. The replay tool allows all of my digital linking on the page to be replayed so as my students have disability. Let me pause, okay? If I want them to get this calculation down in the books, if I want them to have this mathematical model, that's then their opportunity to just control the pace at which they learn it at. Mathematics, too many times I've, I've spoken to math teachers where they perceive another student's ability as very high because they're fast. And I don't necessarily think it's about speed in mathematics. Sometimes you have to go slow to go deep with your learning. And it's, it's all about that for me. And that's where I then say to my students, look, it's, it's not necessarily about rushing on this. Take your time, make sure that you get it right. Use the replay tool if you want to go over any of these concepts at your own pace. And that's all picked up from the digital linking that I've then got on my OneNote page there. OK, and I did this for my students, as you can see, therefore, then I only got them to carry out um, two practices there on their turn, which I then demonstrated and modeled and scaffolded. And I keep these obviously stored within my class notebook, which I might then distribute out using my class notebook features here. If I then wanted to use this as best example, I might distribute this page out to my students from there. But there's there's therefore then four calculations. It's not necessarily about bombarding students with practice and practice and practice. I might even, again, I'll be honest, what I did, actually did with this is I took them to an Excel spreadsheet, but I then gave them a different problem to think about. OK, so I said to them, look, let's think about the area of this this circle within the circle. All right, or can we have a look at the shaded area? Have we got two circles on the go here? And I've used all of my digital linking tools there. And I know for a fact that if I played that again to a student and just said, there you go, there's the example, you get that one down. They're going to take one look at that and be like, whoa, I mean, that's a bit overwhelming. Absolutely. Absolutely not a problem. Remember, go to that view tool, go to replay, select the area that you want. All right. It may well be that I actually should have probably pinch zoomed in on this, but it's that replay tool that honestly for me is golden. I think about some of the amount of times that I used to spend creating video tutorials when really if I get the digital link in right within OneNote, I can then play it back to my students and they can therefore then play it for themselves. 
So Mike, now then going back to another problem, all right, I'm probably giving away a little bit about me, guy. maybe a, um, look, I've got one problem here that's all about pizzas. And then what do I end with for my students? Again, thinking about a real world problem. I also love donuts, especially the icing. How many ring donuts should I be buying? You know, just another example that makes it a bit engaging. And yes, I'll copy and paste my bitmojis in so as my students think and laugh at me diving through a ring donut. But it's just about making it engaging for my students. All of these images I just found off the internet. They're just snipped in. Uh, there's so many other features that I can do with OneNote just to change the color. There you go. It's got some nice pink ice in there. So I'll change the page color to pink. I mean, page color is important for my students who've got different reading preferences. And again, I can bring that about if I launch the immersive reader right here within OneNote. But going back to the mathematics of it, I'm thinking back to my theory. I've got a real world problem. I've opposed some thinking. I've given them a model. I've given them a calculation. Have I gone back to a real world problem? Yes, all of my theory and all of my learning that my students are doing there for mathematics is built and I've created all of this in a OneNote page. I'll show you some other examples of what I've done where it's beneficial for my students. All right, this was today's problem. Probability without replacement. OK, again, trying to give it a real world problem. Uh, this this happens very regularly. I don't want to wake up Mrs. Grocott before I uh, before I head on off out to work or perhaps I might want some prize with a nice cup of tea in the morning. So I definitely don't want to turn the light on before I get my socks out. But look, I've got eight socks in a drawer and six of them are red and two are green. What are my chances of pulling out a matching pair? Well, there's my real world problem. And here's my model. All, right. All of my digital linking to do with my calculations there for my tree diagram is written right here in the OneNote page. It's a great opportunity for my students to get engaged with this. They like finding out about me. They like thinking about mathematics in a, in a different way. I've, I've inserted an image there. I've, I've put some text in. Uh, one of the things that I can do, and this is what I love doing with my students as well, what are my chances? My, my students are very aware that my handwriting is not the best. I don't worry about that. And I do sometimes put it to the test. I've written that out. I've lasso select it. And under the draw tab here, I've got ink to text. Oh, actually, that wasn't that bad. Converted it straight into text for me. All right. Ink to ink to shape, ink to text. Brilliant tools to be able to say to your students, well, look, let's let's create this one note page together. But let's then go back to our mathematical model. Drawing out a tree diagram there on one note was so easy for me. I'm going to keep going back to it. I'm going to go back to that view tab where I'm then going to replay all of my tree diagram here for my students. And I'll say to them, right, are we are we OK with our understanding here about our probability? Are we able to go back over and watch that? Look, have a look at this and they'll go, what? Where is that? Where's he started? Not a problem. Go back to it. I can snip in other examples that I can take off the Internet. And, uh, and there you go opportunity again there i've translated this into portuguese for my students so as my students can access it i do apologize to them and say look i can't set up my language on my uh, notebook to many different things so therefore then we're going to have to accept that you're going to have some red underlining happening on it but all of this this example here just lifted straight off an internet question absolutely not a problem with that i can digital link over the top of it to then do my calculations right here within one note so as i've got that modeled example for my students so as i can then say to them look I might distribute this out to you or actually what I might do within my notebook here is I'll keep this in the content library. I'll organize my notes based on what we're doing in our probability module. And you can access all of that in your class notebook. Yes, I know that class notebook is built into Microsoft Teams. So naturally, then if I wanted to distribute this as an assignment, I can distribute it straight out to my students. But I want to just keep focusing just here as we come towards the, the end about some of the features that I've got in Microsoft OneNote. Going back to the problem earlier, when we were looking at using axes, I mean, th this axis here was so easy for me. Go to the draw tool, go to shapes, go to your set of axes, and you've got three different types of axes there. This one was actually brilliant for um, a coordinates game that I created uh, a couple of lessons ago. But there you go, I want a set of axes. I've not got that quite right on my, on my square paper. Not a problem. I'll lasso select it, and I'll just move that around. I've got this infinity space, like I can drag this all the way over here on my OneNote canvas. So if my students learning and thinking goes off in a direction, I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid to take that all the way across here, all right? because we've got so much thinking that's happening all in and around that OneNote page. Okay, But in terms of labeling and drawing a set of axes there, my students won't find it easier than doing it on a surface or on a device here that's got that. In terms of these lines here, 
like I said earlier, I'm not as a math teacher, I'm not that good. If I wanted to draw a circle, I have to keep my ink to shape on. All right. If I want to draw a square, I have to keep my ink to shape on. Not a problem. But I've still got my other shapes that I can use right here within my OneNote page. So for these, it was just straight lines. And what I might then actually say to my students, okay, that line there, we've spoke about this line here. We know that line E is the line Y equals X. All right. What is it now when I click on it and I drag it up one? Okay. Thinking about those linear equations again now. Well, now it's y equals x plus 1. I'm talking about the y-intercept. I'm talking about now that it crosses through the y-axis there. What about if I move it all the way up here? Look, kids, the gradient hasn't changed. The gradient of my line has not changed at all. But where is it roughly now on my y-axis? Well, that's going to be y equals x plus 3.5. So why is it 3.5? Because I can estimate that it's about halfway in between 3 and 4 on your axis, So. And that's a brilliant tool. And these are all the tools that you've got for helping your students learn mathematics, learn all of that. I know I've done plotting linear equations earlier. So what we'll do is we'll actually just finish again with some. Let's do some expanding brackets. Three bracket um, X minus four. Let's expand this set of brackets. All right. What I'll do is I'll go to my mathematical model. I'll say to my students. I think sometimes I see, sorry. I apologise, I've just shut my one note down. Let me dive back into that just for the last thing. 3x minus 4. There's my set of brackets. Here's my model for how you perform that calculation. Okay, so there's my final answer, 3x. Take away 12. I've expanded all of that. I say to my students, there you go. That's that on the page. Do you understand? Are you able to perform that? No, sir. Can we see you do that again? I don't want to do that again. Not a problem. I keep banging on about it. It's the best tool that you've got if you're a mathematics learner and you want to rewatch something be done is your replay tool right here built into OneNote. And that's your digital link and taking care of it. OK, use all the tools that you've got in OneNote. Use the maths tools. There are so many more than what I've demonstrated in my videos within uh, this here. Let's actually see again. <laughs> let's let's put my hand right into the test. Let's I know for a fact that. Um, the X is how we do them in the UK. Try not to get them to look like the multiplication sign. Let's just go back to the math tools here and uh, and let's see if, it's, if it can put my, oh, that's not bad that. All right, so again, when I go into select an, in an action, I've then got expand, it's three X minus 12. Let's have a look at the solution steps for that. Use the distributive property. And more importantly as well, I, I know I referred to it a couple of times in my video, let's launch that in immersive reader. Let's bring up your reading preferences for your students so as they can have that played back to them through the immersive reader. They can change the background, etc. All of that just from a little bit of digital linking on the page, tapping the math tools, looking at the solution steps and thinking about how we can bring that learning to life for our students. I'm going to stop the recording there, guys, and I'm going to say thank you very much for watching my presentation. I'll go back to my first slide. My name is Adam Grocott. I teach mathematics at Greenville School in Jersey. You can follow me on Twitter at adgrocott. Thank you so much for watching my presentation. I hope you picked up something from it, and I hope that that gives you the enthusiasm to go away and think about how you use Microsoft OneNote for teaching mathematics for your students. And what I'll do there now, guys, as I've stopped.